good morning learners welcome in our first session i am madhulika faculty school of management studies indira gandhi national open university students as we all know that at present scenario in every sphere of life is very complicated and crucial one has to very cautious about the legal aspects and complications and also issues of the rules and regulations in our daily life we should follow the rules and regulation of uh, rules and regulation prescribed which is prescribed by the government of india so each and every person should understand the legal aspects of rules and regulations so today's topic is legal aspect of carriage of goods it covers under pgdibo and mcom program that is ibo 5 that is international marketing logistic for that we have a resource person dr subodh kesarwani he is also faculty member in school of management studies indira gandhi national open university dr kesarwani has a great interest in the field of erp e-commerce and it sector he also take special interest in the field of studies like customer relationship management and statistics he also written one book on erp system i would request to dr subodh please start with your presentation thank you dr madhulika uh, first of all i would like to welcome on my behalf and behalf of school of management studies uh, i would like to tell again that this is uh, part of the program pgdib and mcom mcom and this this is comes under the under the bracket international marketing logistics so dr madhulika what you are talking about uh, the intricacies and the complications regarding the the implementation of legal aspects because uh, once we talk about the transportation of goods because again i will talk about what is basically international marketing logistics and uh, how the cross border transactions used to done into it we will discuss all these things before going into the depth of this legal aspects of carriage of goods because uh, legality is required because once the goods can move from one place to another uh, say from one country to another country uh, they other one country have their different style of working as compared to the other mm -hmm. country which have the different modus operandi so mm -hmm. one has to follow this modus operandi and keeping in mind and how to synchronize this that's why there is a legal uh, legalities comes into picture so legal aspects used to bridge the gap between the two transaction which used to be occurred by one country to another so we will discuss all these things so when we talk and emphasize on international marketing logistics it will always be a cross border movement of goods from one place to another logistics management is an important aspects nowadays because mm -hmm. there are some upcoming tools some it imp implementations like erp is one of the thing then supply chain management is coming as a in a big way and which basically concentrate on the uh, logistic movements transportation of goods from one place to another so before going into all these things i would like to throw some light on this aspects mm -hmm. because supply chain management you know it's a very powerful tool right now which can which can uh, streamline whole process uh, if we if we see uh, uh, the the working of different uh, uh, companies say let's take example of a blue dart or dhl they are the big groups in the in the transportation of goods from one place to another and facilitating uh, individuals as well as organizations mm -hmm. so what uh, what they do they have implemented it tools they have got a barcode and other thing with them so dr subodh can we implement the erp system on this uh, yes uh, yes definitely and we are implementing all this erp uh, erp systems and some upcoming it tools in this okay. thing and even 
this also not uh, facilitating customers as well as facilitating us in building a uh, legal aspects okay. like what uh, how we can uh, see the legalities and how we can see what are the pros and cons so these are also will be done because what i was uh, what i was telling that every country have got their own style of working so right. once there could be a cross border movement of goods from one place to another so this is going to play a very important role into it so uh, supply chain basically if we if we see the the figure which is coming on uh, which is had been displayed on our uh, transparency so uh, this is basically a business process model okay and uh, once we uh, buy the goods ship or deliver and uh, payment is there in the second stage in the mid of it you can see prepare say export had been started now mm -hmm. prepare for export then second stage is export then transportation prepare for import and import so transportation is a very important aspects because mm -hmm. once we talk about logistics international marketing logistics or other aspects transportation comes into picture because okay. uh, because uh, the mo uh, the goods can be moved through this thing only and once you are going to mo start movement uh, start moving the goods from one place to another there must be some paperwork okay. some paperwork some mm -hmm. because Mm, like letter of credit, bill of lading, mm -hmm. charter party, mm -hmm. all these we can discuss one by one, isolately. Mm -hmm. So and can we implement the ERP system on this model? Yes, we can implement the ERP is basically one of the IT tools okay. which can be, uh, which can govern to uh, to get a status because what is going on and it had got different view. What I was telling you that it cannot concentrate on the movement of goods from one place to another. Uh, there must be some legalities where we can uh, uh, there are some legalities in the transporting of goods where ERP can also come okay. and supply chain management you know is a very uh, uh, that's why we, we used to say that once we talk about supply chain management supply chain management is a loop that starts with a customer and then to customer so because uh, one side we have supplier one side we have a customer everything is uh, is interrelated and everything is streamlined so once can see because all these are intermingles yes intermingles so commercial procedures if you see the in the bottom part of this establish sales contract order goods or services advice on delivery the transportation procedure establish transport contract collect move and delivery goods provide goods receive status report etc so all this w and once we start um, uh, having following the transportation procedure the legality come into picture because you can't uh, do the things in a verbal manner there must be a thing which could be in black and white okay. and uh, for getting the things in a black and white we need this legalities and other aspects so we are going to discuss all these things so uh, one has to, has to very cautious about the legal aspect of uh, carriage of goods carriage yes of goods. because and once we talk about the legal aspects of carriage of goods i am going to throw some light on what is actually the nomenclatures of the goods basically what what can be called as goods what cannot be mm -hmm. and uh, what kind what category of goods can be carriage what category of goods cannot be because sometimes the goods which can uh, create damages mm -hmm. say uh, because uh, i will discuss all these things because th just i am giving the example because say if the goods had been imported from so one country to another uh, country okay. and uh, say from china to india one container supposed to come mm -hmm. now in that uh, container we have to see what category of uh, uh, commodity can be put so that there m must be a combinations of that you can't put put the uh, uh, material uh, which can uh, relate with each other and create a damage mm -hmm. so one has to cautious so these type of thing which can uh, which can be synchronized we have to see like what material can be come with other material and can be put in that container otherwise there could be a separate container so all this one has to follow because if there could be a material which can link with other material and create a problem uh, that has to be taken care of because there are material which can keep for one month there are material which can keep for years mm -hmm. so if the container can now we have to see how the containers can move if, if the if the if the material can be uh, can destroy very easily so what we can do we can uh, transport it fastly mm -hmm. whereas the material which can requ which requires some time so we can move it gradually so this thing we have to keep in mind while mm -hmm. while carrying the goods and other things so these are the aspects which one has to take care of and like 
what are the formalities uh, because uh, insurance is also playing a very important role important into it role and uh, once you are uh, uh, transporting the goods from one place to another at that time you are insuring your goods mm -hmm. so what could be the uh, basis for it what could be the procedure for it one has to also very aware cautious, about yeah. aware about that also mm -hmm. so uh, is we include uh, services in the goods we so can we can i am i am going to give like you the, i am going to give you the clear picture about what can be the goods and what cannot be okay. and before going because that's why we are going to here talk about the meaning of goods, goods. carriage right. of goods legal aspects of carriage of goods right, right. and different parts of it like bill of lading charter party right. and all this and how the it is going to uh, bridge the gap between the two we are going to discuss all these things so oh, if we see the meaning of goods uh, it means the goods manufactured by the company and purchased mm -hmm. by the buyer on the terms of this contract mm -hmm. so uh, like uh, uh, say i have uh, i am i am putting uh, uh, one container of pen drives okay. which i am going to supply in the indian market mm -hmm. now uh, you know pen drives have uh, pen drive is a storage device which can be which can use for transferring the data from one place to another it's very easier as compared to the other external mm -hmm. devices like mm -hmm. hard disk like hard disk basically internal drive now we have got external hard disk also mm -hmm. so but what i mean to say that uh, these pen drive have got a uh, different configurations mm -hmm. some are 1 gb some are 2 gb some are mm -hmm. 4 gb and mm -hmm. some are 10 gb it's coming into the market so it means a good manufactured by the company and purchased by the buyer on the terms of this contract mm -hmm. so 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 goods could be in that nature and uh, whatever it had been defined it had mentioned into it mm -hmm. so means the product and materials which the seller is to supply to the buyer in accordance with this condition so mm -hmm. this is a very important point uh, as far as meaning of goods is concerned mm -hmm. uh, physically tangible objects that can be used to satisfy economic wants mm -hmm. Because uh, money had been entered so into. So goods is always in physical tangible. Yes, yes. It, it could be. It cannot be included in services. Yes, uh, okay. that can be used to satisfy economic wants, including but not limited to food, shoes, car, houses, books, and furniture. But it can be away, over and above to this. Okay. It's not confined mm -hmm. to all these four mm -hmm. things: food, shoes, car, houses, books, and furniture. But mm -hmm. it can be over and above to it, where we can. Where we can see accordingly, like uh, the example which I have given to you, hmm. which are uh, hard pen, drive. pen drives and other IT components and other aspects. So, mm -hmm. includes the cargo and any container not supplied by or on behalf of the company in respect of which the company provides the service. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is the important point. So, as far as meaning of goods is concerned, now uh, if we see uh, the other aspect that is carriage of goods. The carriage of goods across the country may take place by sea, by air, by road, and by multimodal transportation. The so uh, these are the ways by which by which we can we transport can our goods, by uh, by which we can uh, give the logistic supports to our mm -hmm. counterparts. So. Uh, see where uh, the role of river is other aspects is there mm -hmm. by air helicopters aeroplanes and other mm -hmm. road there are two way by bus or by railways mm -hmm. okay. and multimodal transportation is a combination of all the three okay. where sometimes you see there are some courier services which used to follow the multimodal transportation system just to provide a better service to their customer like in the beginning stage if they see that uh, the thing can move through air so they can pass on the things through air and afterwards they can take a help of ship mm -hmm. or they can help they can take a help of river and other railways so mm -hmm. uh, this can uh, give the called as a multimodal transportation where uh, for giving more privileges to a customer these are the thing which used to be come into so one play. can use all these uh, transportation exactly. system exactly and uh, you know what i was to why the it is going to play a very important role because what the it is doing, doing right now we have got a software support from this uh, service providers mm -hmm. from these transporta transporters so where you can uh, visualize what is where your commodity is right now say mm -hmm. i have say i have uh, uh, hired any any courier service and say DHL now the goods had been delivered by them to our destination so mm -hmm. at that time what they used to do 
दे हैव गॉट a software support where you can log in with the help of your docket number and other thing and you can get the status that where your commodity is right now where good okay. is right now okay. it's landing at uh, at place, certain place where it is and how much time it is going to take and when it is going to come to you so these are the questions which can be answered so by you by the software it is a vital uh, yes it is a vital tool because uh, supply chain management which i have given uh because uh, now there are certain legalities and other thing uh, say sometimes what happen even uh, there is one good case study where where you can sort out your legal aspects with the help of this software support also mm -hmm. like sometimes some documents are missing and at, the, at that time what you can do you can see what is where you are lacking with the documents and you can submit online to it just to get the product get the goods as early as possible so mm -hmm. these are the plus points you are getting while Uh, carriage of goods with the help of this thing so the nature and content of contract of carriage of goods also depend upon the mode of transport used this is a very important aspect because uh, if the if the goods are in big numbers mm -hmm. you can't uh, you can't place it with the with air you need uh, you need sea uh, support or railways and other things so uh, it's again depend on the nature and content of the of the carriage of goods so by contract of carriage of goods we mean a contract whereby a person agrees to carry goods from one place to another in return for payment so payment is a very important aspects where we are uh, carrying the goods from one place to another uh, and there is involvement of ma money into it so mm -hmm. like uh, if we hire the any container or any courier services any services transport service so they used to take the payment and on on that basis they Uh, they charge something and they deliver the good at our destination so these are the points which comes under the carriage of goods so we will discuss carriage of goods under under sea under air road and multimodal transportation also so if you see the certain terminologies which come under so the courier companies are using all these transportation yes they are using they are using according to uh, the nature and content of the Uh, goods and commodities if the mm -hmm. commodity what i am telling sometimes uh, uh, pilferages is very fast mm -hmm. damages is very fast so like uh, in the in the case of petrols and lubricants evaporation is very high mm -hmm. and uh, though there are certain terms and condition also we will discuss like uh, in their terms and condition evaporations are not included like say uh, if if they have uh, loaded say 1 lakh One lakh liters of petrol and something had been evaporated. It's not under their purview. So we will discuss all these things. But uh, according to that, uh, because if the if the commodity or goods are uh, evaporating very fast, so they need us. Uh, they need a transportation methodology which can be very fast as compared because if the as compared to other, other commodities where the if you are uh, shipping the cotton with the cotton mm -hmm. it can take more time mm -hmm. it requires space also mm -hmm. so we will see all these things so before going into the depth of all these things i am going to talk something about the terminology which can be related to the carriages mm -hmm. in these rules the following expressions have the meaning hereby assigned to them respectively like carrier includes the owner or the charterer who enters into a contract of carriage with a shipper hmm. contract of uh, carriage applies only to contracts of carriage covered by a bill of lading bill of lading we are going to discuss it's a document actually which required so we will talk about the bill of lading and charter party also and what is the distinguishment between all these two we will talk about that aspects uh, or any similar document of title in so far as such document relates to the carriage of goods by sea including any bill of lading or any similar document as aforesaid issued under or pursuant to a charter party from the moment at which such a bill of lading or similar document of title regulates the relations between a carrier and a holder of the same so okay. uh, this these are some uh, thing when we talk about the goods which i already i have discussed includes goods wares merchandises and articles of every kind of whatsoever except live animals mm -hmm. and cargo which by the contract of carriage is stated as being carried on deck and is so carried so animals are not part of this goods so okay ship means any so vessel we cannot include animals yes yes ship means any vessel used for the carriage of goods by sea because ship mm -hmm. vessel is one of the terminology which we use 
always so carriage of goods covers the period from the time when the goods are loaded on the time when they are discharged from the ship so uh, sometimes in the dockyards or in the ports the, the retention is there where the container used to be kept due to some reason so uh, at that time it will be a part of it like uh, if you see in the uh, in the manufacturing department we have got raw material finished goods and work in progress work in progress where mm -hmm. some goods which are in the process of uh, of converting into the raw into the finished goods okay. so it's also a part of the inventory okay in the same manner if the carriage of goods are in the ship whether it had been delivered or it's so it's a, it's a time calculated is that only so if we see the uh, carriage of goods by sea goods transported by sea are governed by the carriage of goods by sea act 1925 and the indian bills of lading act 1856 okay besides the merchant shipping act 1958 and the marine insurance act 1963 are also applicable here we shall confine our discussion to the first two of the ever mentioned act a contract of carriage of goods by sea is called a contract of affreightment affreightment comes from the word freight because freight is the word freight. which we use to in general and it's a common thing so and the consideration for carriage is called the freight a contract of affreightment may takes the form of a charter party where entire ship is hired or a bill of lading where the goods are to be carried in a general ship which can be used for this purpose by any person so uh, once we uh, distinguish between bills of lading and charter party bill of lading is basically a document where a charter party uh, is is a entire hiring of a ship so okay. where so you have a prescribed form is a prescribed form and they have got some distinguishment between the two and we will discuss all these thing mm -hmm. so in both the these contract the ship owner as the carrier undertakes the responsibility of carrying the goods of the consignor safely and securely to the destination so ultimately in both the cases uh, uh, they have to deliver the good in a timely manner so so conditions if you see the conditions implied in a contract for carriage of goods by sea the following conditions are implied sea worthiness this means that the ship is reasonably fit to encounter the perils of the sea commencement of voyage the ship shall be ready to load the cargo and commence the voyage agreed on without undue delay and non deviation of voyage it means that if the ship does not carry out the voyage by the prescribed or usual route in the customary manner the contract become void from the beginning of the voyage no matter when and where the deviation from the usual route took place so mm. these are some of the legal legal aspects legal aspects so dangerous goods not to be shipped okay. what i was talking about that uh, one has to very cautious because if there could be any damages arises from from this uh, shipping of the dangerous goods mm. ultimately the person who had given all mm. the consignment all the consignment should be penalized for it so okay. because in that case there could be loss to the uh, uh, to the person uh, where mm. they, where who had loaded this all the who the mm. uh, what i mean to say who are actual owner of the consignment yes so if the shipper ships dangerous goods and if on account of this the charterer suffers any damage he can recover the same from the shipper mm. so this we can talk about so carriage of goods by sea is basically of two type one is uh, bill of lading and other is charter party so i am st i am starting from the bill of lading so bill of lading sometimes referred to as uh, bol or acronym is b oblique l we used to call it is a document issued by a carrier example given a ship master or by a company shipping department acknowledging that specified goods have been received on board as cargo for conveyance to named place for delivery to the consignee who is usually identified a through bill of lading involves the use of at least two different modes of transport from road rail air and sea or we can say three the term derives from the noun bill a schedule of cost for service supplied or to be supplied and from the verb to lade which means to load a cargo onto a ship or other form of transport, transport. so this is uh, basically 
uh, origination of bill of lading from where it had been arised. So, the actual definitions of bill of lading is that a bill of lading is a type of document. It's basically a document once we compare with charter party, whereas in charter party we used to hire the whole ship. Mm -hmm. And in bill of lading is a type of document that is used to acknowledge the receipt of shipment of goods. Okay. A transportation company or carrier issues this document to a shipper in addition to acknowledging the receipt of goods. A bill of lading indicates the particular vessel on which the goods have been placed. Vessel is basically a ship, okay. uh, their okay. intended destination and the terms for transporting the shipment to its final destination. So. Uh, if you see uh, uh, the figure which, I, which is coming on the TV screen, it's bill of lading. Uh, it's a document. It's a document which consists of uh, many uh, things many like shipping things. instructions, mm -hmm. which have shimming, shipping instructions, schedules, notifications, reports, tender, track and trace, booking. Track and trace is a very important thing right now. Which uh, where IT is playing a very important role okay. because you can track and trace where your goods is right now. Okay, right. Like with the on our complaint number. Yes, or with the, or with the help of your uh, docket number and other details and date by which you can know your uh, consignment is is basically at that uh, is standing at the where right where, now. Uh, so or it or it is maybe it is on the way yes so okay. this is one of the contemporary approach to bill of lading and there are some some vendors and uh, how they are interacting uh, one to uh, on one to one basis and on on uh, with the help of it tool it's very very well explained with the help of uh, graph so can we use all these it tool in uh Yes, we can use because if we if we start with the email, uh, email is a very contemporary electronic mail where you can uh, where where the receiver get the information very fastly as compared mm -hmm. to the conventional mails where you can fax where you can uh, physically move the letters and it will reach two three days. So uh, with the help of email and other thing, the the movement of the of the information is very fast and fax is one of the aspects where sometimes uh, uh, we need a document in a black and white and in, in that case uh, uh, fax could be more powerful as compared to email though it's uh, uh, email is more fastly so courier service is one of the way edi is electronic data interchange and website is web web enabled tools basically where so you have got website. All these uh, tools have been uh, I mean uh, have been legal aspects. Uh, yes they uh, it's linked with the legal aspects because uh, because what we used to do uh, as far as legal aspect is concerned uh, now say if you what I was telling you the very good example was that sometimes uh, there was lack of document which mm -hmm. has to be submitted by one for uh, for getting the consignment. Mm -hmm. Now he is in the pending process, mm -hmm. but if he had got IIT support with them, mm -hmm. and their uh, their legal legalities will be more free flow mm -hmm. as compared to uh, the conventional mode. So, what are the the best uh, way to explain this is that uh, uh, what it can it can. Uh, uh, done that it can basically streamline the whole process where where whole transporting uh, transportation aspects can be revamped mm -hmm. so this is one of the way where different vendors are interacting with on one to one basis as you see like this is one of the example where uh, they are interacting and just to save time and okay. So shipper, forwarder, everybody is getting the information. What they are interacting each other with each other. With each other and like according to the problem they are facing and what what solutions they need for it. So mm -hmm. they are getting the IT support and other things which which are going to which are which are helping them. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we th see the main types of bill of lading, it's uh, bifurcated into four parts. That is straight bill of lading, order bill of lading, bearer bill of lading, and surrender bill of lading. If we see the straight bill of lading, it's more like uh, 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 like when we go and open our account in bank accounts. It's more like account payee checks or bearer checks, where you like be, uh, if we compare straight bill of lading with the bearer bill of lading. 
the behavior bill of lading can be uh, states the delivery shall be made to whosoever holds the bill like whosoever holds the bill can get the delivery such bill m may be created explicitly or it is an order bill that fails to nominate the consignee whether in its original form or through an endorsement in blank a bearer bill can be negotiated by physical delivery mm. whereas if we talk about the straight bill the bill states that goods are consigned to a specified person and it is not negotiable free okay it is not negotiable free from existing equities that is any endorsee acquires no better rights than those held by the endorser so for example if the carrier or another holds a lien over the goods as security mm. for unpaid debts the endorsee is bound by the lien mm. although if the endorser wrongfully fail to disclose the charge the endorsee will have a right to claim damages for failing to transfer an unencumbered title so this is one of the difference between the straight bill of lading and bearer bill of lading okay. it's like uh, the best way to understand it's like a account pay checks and bearer checks okay. right? account pay checks are the checks which can directly go to the account uh, account holders account holder uh, and whereas bearer checks can be taken by anyone because mm. uh, so uh, sometimes we need this type of modus operandi that's why there is bifurcation in this bill of lading order bill of lading this bill uses exp express words to make the bill negotiable that is it states the delivery is to be made to the further order of the consignee using words such as delivery to a limited or to or assign so it had got some flexibility as compared to the straight bill of lading and surrender bill of lading under term import documentary credit the bank releases the document on receipt from the negotiating bank but the importer does not pay the bank until the maturity of the draft so it is uh, a different kind of bill of lading which is there if we now the best is that we can see the format of bill of lading the bill of lading uh, this is the format where it is a legal document it's a legal it's a legal document uh and uh, uh, uh where at the uh, we have got header footer and body part okay. in the header we have uh, uh, date names address and other things are there locations where it has to be delivered and uh, barcode space is there now we have what got what is uh, barcode space barcode is basically uh, 13 numbers which used to be in a uh, uh generally it could uh, is now at the end is give uh, is mentioned at the end of the uh, at the back of the product okay. uh, or commodity okay okay where it's you can where you can it's uh, you mean it's a consignment number it's consignment number if you have seen any goods any commodity generally in the back of it uh, they have got a bar coding okay. uh, which can indicate that uh, uh, the many thing like when this product had been prepared, prepared. what could be mm. uh, the ingredients number and other thing products. number so like that in bill of lading also they are um, having a barcode space with mm -hmm. them which can easily very easily locate the things and uh, for this uh, barcodes we have got a bargain with us uh, which is very fruitful uh, which helpful in extracting the numbers from there and automatically put on the computer screen and where one can locate the things in a very easier manner so bill of lading number which could be in bar barcode freight charge terms so this is one of the formats and some terms and conditions also mentioned so uh, this is format of bill of lading uh, and uh, this is supplement to the bill of lading where customer order information is also there customer order number additional shipper information what is supplement bill uh, supplement to the bill of lading this is something uh, because you know uh, what i was talking okay. about the supply chain management there is one other aspect known as customer relationship management okay customer relationship management is is more emphasis is more emphasizing towards the customer uh, uh, customer interest in other things and uh, with the help of it tools and other it applications it is it is also integrated uh, it aspects as compared to the supply chain management and enterprise source planning where uh, where customers are getting more privileges as uh, while purchasing the products or if they are delivering the products from one place to another so now what you talking about the services uh, and uh, the service oriented industries or the services like insurance what the insurance company used to provide to their customers these are uh, 
more having the flavor of customer relationship management and now there is other words known as electronic customer relationship management which is more web enabled and web uh, web savvy okay. uh, where uh, the f where there is a flavor of knowledge management and all the IT applications are there so now hmm. people are not using the conventional system yes that's why so CRM is uh, upcoming in a big way where uh, it is facilitating the customers as well as uh, so uh, CRM, uh, as CRM as also play an important role yes in it plays it played an important role because uh, you know it's not confined to providing better services to the customer but it is over and above to that okay. it is a top up where where one can one can uh, compare compare the uh, the benefits given by the employer one can compare the services given by the different agencies mm -hmm. so it's not confined to that uh, uh, that only it can uh, emphasize on the service aspects okay. but but it can talk more even over and above to that aspect so crm is basically uh, our upcoming tool right now which is so we could which is enlarging is enlarging the its area from service orientation to the overall support to the okay customer. so we can include the crm uh, crm also in this aspect yes we can we can do that so now the other uh, part is as far as uh, carriage of goods by sea is concerned that is charter party a charter party is a contract providing for hiring of whole ship mm -hmm. so this is a very important thing whereas in bill of lading the more documentation is there whereas in charter party uh, contract is providing for hiring a whole ship that's why we used to say uh, there is a uh, air services given to the individual customers but so there is a uh, it is also mandatory part of the uh, carriage of goods uh, it's not it's carriage of the goods not mandatory you can choose one of the aspects sometimes okay. sometimes your consignment is more okay. at that time you need it's like that uh, say uh, if if individually we are moving we can going by one of the jet airways mm. but if we are in big numbers we can mm. hire the whole whole plane so uh, <laughs> that's why it's called a charter plane so okay. charter party is uh, when you are uh, hiring the whole space okay mm. now whatever you do it's it's uh, it's depend on the particular individuals mm -hmm. so where you are hiring the whole ship mm. or the and you are uh, putting the consignment which is related to you only whatever some the reason behind is that why the uh, why charter party is useful as compared to the bill of lading because uh, the say indian oil is there indian mm -hmm. oil is uh, is uh, the lubricants and the crude oil and all these uh, oils are coming which where evaporation is very high and uh, possibility of damages is very high because mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, so keeping in mind that they used to hire a whole ship mm -hmm. and in that because if they are highly hiring the partial ship maybe any goods can be linked with that and it can it could damage uh, so keeping in that interest they used to hire a whole ship in terms may amount and to and it's called chartered party it's, it's called chartered party I will give you the difference where chartered party is how it is different from this bill of lading mm -hmm. so it terms may amount to leasing of the ship when the master and the crew of the ship become the servants of the charterer, a charter party may be for a particular period or for a particular voyage. Okay. Say, uh, for a particular period, for a particular, uh, like, uh, uh, they have got, say, this much come out, uh, goods with them. Hmm. Say, one lakh ton. Now, it's, uh, the ship capacity is 25% of that. Mm -hmm. So once the that four consignment will be complete, the job will be over. Oh, so right. so this is the thing which is going on. In the former case, it is called a time charter party. In the later case, a voyage charter party. So there is two types of charter party. Charter party. The form varies from trade to trade depending on the customs of the trade. So it yeah. varies from trade to trade and customers to customers. So so there is no specific convention for charter party. Not only that, in most of the countries, no specific legal provisions exist. Okay. Uh, for concluding charter party on the basis of minimum requirement charter party contains all terms and conditions of carriage which may also include rights and obligations of the parties and the provisions for settlement of disputes like undertaking of ship owners undertaking of charters so these are the 
thing which will which comes so best is that the difference between bill of lading and charter, charter party if we see uh, 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 as far as bill of lading is concerned it is a receipt of goods on board of the ship as well as uh, evidence for the contract of carriage of goods like uh, receipt of goods documentation contract of carriage of goods whereas it is only a contract of hiring the entire ship mm -hmm. or part thereof what we are doing we are hiring the whole ship or part thereof sometimes what i was but basically the number is big as compared to the bill of lading we are we are more concentrating on the documentations and other aspects and and the number is very less if you compare with the charter party so bill of lading it is a document of title to goods mm -hmm. whereas charter party it is not a document of title to goods okay uh, it can be transferred by endorsement what are the example which i have given like bearers bill of lading mm -hmm. can be transferred mm -hmm. uh, whereas charter party cannot be transferred okay it does not amount to lease of ship mm -hmm. whereas charter party uh, somewhat emphasize on that aspects it may amount to lease of ship or part thereof mm -hmm. like uh, if they have a like some duration is there mm -hmm. if they have a consignment which can come in on regular basis for a particular period so on that basis they can take the thing so it is always for carriage of goods to a particular destinations it may be particular voyage for for a particular period so here the destination plays important role as far as bill of lading is concerned mm -hmm. whereas in charter party the period also important because once the job is not over like uh, the sand and other things are there which is regularly coming from the mines okay mm -hmm. now, and now what they are doing they are basically once the job will not be over they can associate it with that group particularly mm -hmm. so these are the things which are there so there are certain liabilities of carriage of goods by sea loss or damage due to negligence no limitations no liability for misstated value mm -hmm. sometimes what the people do they uh, they, pu they lo upload the consignments and misstated their value mm -hmm. and if there could be anything wrong in the future they claim for it so these so there could be no liability for the misstated value extent of liability liability in case in case dr. of danger sorry dr subodh time hmm. is very short and our journey is very long i think uh, you are uh, you have been explained very well about the legal and issues and complications of the carriage of goods and services now i think student are able to understand the all these issues and complications but still and you know what you have told in the very beginning stage that legal aspects have got a very lot of intricacies and complications exactly, and it exactly. comes only when because there is a law uh, which can be which can be amended which can be changed so ultimately next time the next thing will enter so uh, it's a learning process where uh, you have to come out all from all these intricacies and right. and the, this transportation is a very uh, when the goods are moving from moving from one place to another exactly, at that time exactly. the legalities play a very important role but we role. have also a limitation yes. <laughs> and uh, time that's why some point had been left if we get right, a time we can cover right. that part thank also. you thank you so much dr subodh thank you